I'm Tom Baker, this is Chasing Cars, and this is the cheapest Toyota Kluger you can buy. If you're a subscriber to the channel, you'll know that a couple of months ago, I brought you guys a review of the new Toyota Kluger in top spec Grande hybrid trim. Now that car is about $75,000 before on-road costs, but the GX V6 two-wheel drive sitting behind me is only 47 grand, so a much cheaper way in to a full-size Toyota family SUV. And in today's video, we're gonna be finding out what do you lose but what do you keep? And do you really need to spend that much more on a Kluger to feel like you're getting a very complete family car? Now, I know that a lot of you in the comments have been requesting more base model reviews, or at least reviews of more affordable models uh, in various range lineups, and that's something I respect, and we're definitely working hard on doing that, and today's video is one of those. Now, we'll do our usual thing. We'll run through the interior, the back seat, the third row, the boot, We'll discuss the running costs and then we'll take this V6 Kluger out onto the road to see what it's like to drive. But I think that's a good place to start under the bonnet to discuss the two engine choices you have in the Kluger and what the main differences are between them. But before we get started, hit subscribe down below. The first decision that you'll be making if you want to buy a Kluger is deciding which of the two engines is right for you. Now, a V6 is nothing new for a Kluger, and this engine carries across from the old model. It's a direct injected 3.5 liter naturally aspirated petrol V6, making 218 kilowatts of power and 350 Newton meters of torque. So very traditional engine for this segment, lusty six cylinder petrol, but to complicate things or give a lot more choice, Toyota have also introduced a hybrid powertrain for the new generation Kluger here in Australia. It's essentially a beefed up version of the RAV4 hybrid unit. So it's a 2.5 litre four cylinder petrol teamed with three electric motors, two on the front axle, one on the rear axle. So it's electric all wheel drive and it produces 184 kilowatts of combined power. And I was pretty effusive in my praise of it in the Kluger Grande hybrid review you can find on the channel. I'd watch that one for a few more insights about the hybrid. Today, we're gonna to be concentrating on the cheaper V6 engine. It's clear when you jump into the new Kluger GX that Toyota are really abandoning their old strategy of base models being real stripper rental car specs because actually the cabin of the GX is now really quite presentable. And there's one massive change, which is that the base Kluger has now ditched the old plastic steering wheel and plastic gear shifter. And that might not sound like much, but hey, you're touching this the whole time you're driving and just leather wrapping it with nice stitching, same for the shifter. It really does go a long way to making it feel like, you know, a more premium car. But at 47 grand, like a leather steering wheel should probably have been standard for a long time. At least it now is. Now the basic dashboard and other components of the Kluger is pretty much shared range wide. Here in the GX, it's really just this kind of black or gray cloth which sets it apart from the rest of the range which has leather but to be honest the cloth that they've used on these seats it feels pretty good it's going to ward off the hot australian sun really well so if you're not buying a car because you need to um, transport small children who are going to spill stuff then in fact the cloth seats of the gx could actually be the best option for you now they're not heated they are manually adjustable but they're quite supportive the driving position is pretty good no major concerns now looking across here the gx has manual air conditioning it's not dual zone but you get these nice rubberized strips it's very clear what all of these buttons do and then above that we've got an eight inch touchscreen unfortunately this is range wide now here on the base model that's fine eight inch is enough for the base car i reckon but on the Grande and even on the mid-spec GXL, the fact this screen is so small and relatively low resolution is a disappointment. However, it does have wired Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, which works well. We've still got the Kluger shelf, as I call it in cars that aren't even Klugers, with cable management, so you can tidy up your cables and just leave your phone sitting here. What's nice is that Toyota have added this kind of cloth or I can't tell if it's cloth or rubber, but either way, it's slightly sticky so your stuff doesn't slide around and make annoying noises. The stereo in the base model is actually fine. Like complicated bass lines uh, and really high treble stuff does get a bit cut off and a bit blurry, but for most music and podcasts, it sounds totally okay. 
You look forward at analog gauges, small color trip computer in between them, but it tells you everything you need to know. And we still get a whole bunch of adaptive safety tech as I'll talk about when we take this vehicle for a drive. In terms of misses here up front, it would be that the GX gets a whole bunch of hard plastic, which becomes softer materials on the higher models, particularly the Grande. And even sort of down here in the center box, because it's not flock lined, stuff is gonna scratch around in there and you really do hear that while you're driving. But as a basic big family SUV, it's comfortable, it's presentable, and pretty much has everything you'd be looking for, except navigation. Navigation is not included on the GX. You have to step up for the GXL for that, which also brings toys like electrically adjustable uh, leather seats. The Kluger is a big family SUV. That's the whole point. We'll take a look at the third row in a moment, but you can see right here in the second row just how roomy it is and how much more space there is compared to the RAV4, which sits underneath the Kluger in the Toyota SUV lineup. For myself, it's six foot, leg room, cavernous behind my own driving position, headroom is good, shoulder room is fine, the middle seat really isn't that much of a perch, so you could use it, and the floor is almost completely flat, which is great. And even though this is the base car, we still do get a few nice amenities back here. We get a flip down armrest with two cup holders, we get air vents up here in the ceiling, and we even get a separate fan and temperature zone here in the back seat, which is quite rare at this end of a large SUV range. Now, we also have two more USB ports here in the back. That brings the total for the car to five, which I think is fairly generous. The only area where you notice that it really does feel like a base model is that you know, the doors are just all shiny, hard, grained black plastic and this kind of looks like a 1997 Camry to me up here but pretty much everything else about this car is really perfectly accommodating you can slide this bench forward to give people in the third row a little bit more space and that's what we're going to check out next access to the third row of the Kluger for kids is pretty easy and safe because the Kluger has been re-engineered for right-hand drive actually quite well including because the curbside access the smaller lighter piece of the second row bench has been moved to the correct curbside for left-hand traffic right-hand drive like Australia and because this is a big car you can see the third row is roomy so for myself it's six foot headroom is good legroom is fine even with this seat in a pretty generous position for the person sitting here toe room's good shoulder room's good and in terms of amenities we've got airbag coverage here we've got cup holders and we've got air vents in the roof as well so all good the only bad point is that the squab is terrible it's so flat so for adults or anyone big you can see that my legs are just floating kind of mid-air which is what's going to make sitting back here for a long time quite tiring third rows in cars like the hyundai palisade which is a direct rival to the kluger but also other vehicles like the skoda kodiak and the volvo xc90 have a more supportive squab in that sense but for occasional use for big families this is totally fine coming around here to the back of the kluger i think at worst you would call the design inoffensive and at best kind of quietly handsome i think particularly on the 20 inch wheels you get on the grande it can be a pretty good looking car uh, i had this, this navy blue one um, for the grande review which actually looked really quite smart here is a base model in the silver it's quite rental car spec looking but you know i think the shape is completely fine you know the cx9 probably gives you a slightly more emotional design in this segment manual tailgate on the base model very assisted still easy to open i've got the third row still in place here even with that up we've got a good amount of room and as you can see there's absolutely no issue fitting at least medium and small in there in terms of suitcases which is great so if the whole family wants to take someone to the airport that's possible under the boot floor we've got a nice neat spot for our cargo cover and under the car we've got our spare wheel which is nice now dropping the third row very very simple those seats are away opening up to reveal heaps of space almost flat floor as i mentioned getting all of our suitcases in there absolutely no problem you could get double that no issue now closing the manual tailgate is a bit more of a frustration see i don't think i actually got it i didn't there we go but all you have to do is step up to the GXL if you want 
the privilege of an electric tailgate. Next up, let's discuss the running costs of the V6 Toyota Kluger, which are naturally a bit higher than the hybrid version of this car. You save some money up front on the purchase price, but it uses a bit more fuel in the long term, or a lot more fuel if most of your running is in town. So let's start there fuel consumption. On the highway, the V6 actually isn't too bad. It'll give you about eight liters per 100 Ks without trying too hard. Combined driving, we manage 10 to 11. Again, not too bad in two wheel drive form, but in stop start traffic, you can expect more like 13 liters per 100 Ks out of this engine. By contrast, the hybrid will give you sort of seven to eight fairly reliably in mixed driving conditions. Now, the warranty on the Kluger is five years with unlimited kilometers, and the servicing on the Kluger is capped for five visits. Those intervals are annual or every 15,000 Ks, and each visit will set you back $250 for a five-year total of $1,250, which is really cheap for this segment of vehicle. So, what is the new Toyota Kluger like to drive in base V6 form? Well, when you look at this car from outside, you can see that it's on pretty chunky tires, it's on 18 inch wheels, which are quite small uh, in a full size SUV or you know, large family SUV like this. And of course, being equipped with the V6 petrol engine, you pretty much know what to expect. It'll have that sort of laid back, big petrol sort of vibe, uh, but you know, not with a huge amount of low end torque. And that's kind of the way the Kluger has pretty much always been here in Australia. And it's actually the introduction of the new hybrid version, which is now raised kind of like a big choice for the first time when it comes to selecting a Kluger to buy. And I've already covered the hybrid at length in my review of the Grande Hybrid, and I encourage you to watch that as well. But it turns out there's actually plenty to like about the carryover 3.5 liter direct injected petrol V6. Uh, this engine is used really widely throughout the Toyota and Lexus universe. It's very much tried and tested. And when it comes to relatively uncomplicated big engines, you know, without the sort of complications of turbocharging or being a diesel or whatnot, there's a lot of inherent reliability and dependability to this motor, which I think people will find very appealing. Now we do get a lot of comments on the channel kind of expressing doubt in Toyota's hybrid systems and asking, you know, what happens when the battery um, doesn't work anymore and whatnot. And so I think, you know, favoring the petrol V6 because you believe the hybrid isn't reliable or isn't durable is not the correct reason to do it because the hybrid batteries are warranted for like 10 years here in Australia. And if you look at the amount of old Camry hybrid taxis on the road, old Prius taxis on the road, it shows you a lot about just how well those systems hold up long term with really punishing ownership. But that doesn't take away from the fact that V6 petrol is a good dependable engine. So it produces 218 kilowatts of power and 350 newton meters of torque, basically bang on what you would expect from a naturally aspirated direct injected engine of this size. It's hooked up to an eight speed torque converter automatic gearbox, and you can have it in either front wheel drive or mechanical all wheel drive compared to the electric all wheel drive that you get with the 2.5 liter hybrid. But I think the main reason that people would want to consider the V6 petrol is it just has that, you know, that lovely grunt available immediately underfoot you know, without being turbocharged, it just means there's no real lag in this powertrain. Put your foot down, starts making that gorgeous sound, and you're away. It's quite quick when you wind it all the way out. Now, it does need a rev. The torque off the line and on light throttle is sufficient to move the vehicle around. It's not slow ever, really. But if you want to make that kind of quick process, you do have to dig into, into the throttle. The eight speed auto is really good. It's an ASIN unit, just slows the gears together nicely, but it's quick and responsive. We don't have paddles, but you can shift it manually if you really care that much. And while it is, you know, sort of 30, 40% thirstier than the hybrid, a lot of people will just prefer that relaxed touring ability of the V6 petrol. But it's actually not the engine's 
that set the Kluger apart. It's actually the ride and handling because the shift to Toyota's TNGA-K front wheel drive, large front wheel drive vehicle platform uh, has really transformed the car. The old Kluger was really soft and lurchy and had loose body control. And I think almost everybody made that point who critically reviewed that car. Uh, and that just isn't the case for the new Kluger. It's certainly still set up to be plush. It's still on the softer side rather than on the firmer side, which is what you want with a family car like this that doesn't pretend to be a sports model or anything like that. But it's actually all about the control in the suspension. It just doesn't allow the body to tip over. And it has this inherent grip in the chassis which just helps the tires out massively. We're on relatively modest tires here, Toyo open country, nothing special. And yet there are high grip levels in the car because the chassis is just really, really well sorted. The steering is quick and light, not a huge amount of feel to it, but you know, it certainly does an adequate job of getting the car turned in. It's actually remarkably agile for a big car and it has really narrowed that gap to the Mazda CX-9 in terms of driver engagement, which is not the first priority for this segment, but at the same time, I think it's completely normal. You know, if you need a big car because you've got a big family, um, but you don't want to completely give up on driving fun, you shouldn't have to. In the old Kluger, you pretty much did have to. In the new one, a keen driver will find something to enjoy about punting the Kluger along, and that's great. I still think that, you know, here at the entry level, a base CX-9 is still a fantastic car to consider. Much more torque from its four-cylinder turbo petrol, and, you know, even better steering, even better handling, but Toyota have really started to close that gap. What's terrific is the level of refinement. It's a really quiet car, as you can probably hear. Nice and relaxing to drive. Many, many Ks in this car. The driving position is good, the view out is, is excellent, uh, and the safety systems are actually really well tuned. And as I often say, there's a difference between just having them and having them, but they're also tuned properly. So the adaptive cruise works well, the lane keep assist or the lane trace assist works pretty well. Not as good as the Palisade, the Hyundai Palisade, but considerably better than the Mazda CX-9. We've got blind spot monitoring. Uh, we've got a good reversing camera in this car. Uh, and you know, it's big, it feels pretty tough. So as a family motoring proposition, I think there's much to like. Now, because I do a lot of my running in suburbia, the hybrid appeals very much because you still get the packaging benefits of the Kluger, but you cut your fuel bill by a considerable amount and it still has good power, uh, plenty of torque backed up by the electric motors uh, but for people that are looking to do a lot of highway driving, a lot of long distance driving, and just want to have that lovely tried and tested V6 under the bonnet, why not? It still makes plenty of sense. So those are my opinions of the Toyota Kluger GX V6, which is a significant improvement over the old Kluger and the old base model Kluger. Still the same lusty V6 petrol engine, but radical improvements to the ride and handling. And as such, it just feels like a much better car. But while the base model is pretty good, I actually think there are two variants in the Kluger lineup that make more sense. The first is the GXL V6, keeps the engine, but you just step up the interior to leather, which is gonna be more family friendly if there are any spills. But I continue to think that the top spec Grande Hybrid is also a great, very complete family car. It is expensive, but apart from its small touchscreen, it feels expensive, you know, and you really do feel like it's kind of the full fat family truckster. But even here at the other end of the Kluger lineup, there is a lot to like. Keen to know your view? Let me know down below in the comments. While you're there, make sure to hit subscribe. And as always, thanks for watching Chasing Cars.